Okay, well, I made a mistake and I popped one of the VRF 150s, which is one of the final MOSFETs in my FTDX 101MP. Uh, I've already repaired it, but I thought it'd be interesting to, to show uh, a way to check between a good and a bad uh, VRF 150. Uh, so you have these two contacts here, which is the source, and these are typically grounded uh, in the uh, configuration. It's a push-pull um, amplifier, and these are usually tied to ground, uh, these two contacts inside. The one with the angle on it, uh, that is your, your drain. So you get your drain, your source, and then your gate. And one way to check it, if you apply with a a digital multimeter in a diode function, uh, you can check uh, from putting your positive contact on the drain and negative contact on your on either of the source contacts. It should show that there's it's off, so there's no connectivity. But being this is a FET, all you have to do is add a little bit of static charge to your gate, and now you can check it you'll see it's conducting. In this case, the voltage drop between the drain and the source is 0 0.019 volts. Uh, and to turn it off, you just take the negative lead, tap it to your gate, you'll see now it's in the off state. And that's how the fetch should work. Now, in this guy here, we connect it the same way, positive to the drain, negative to the um, source, we see that it appears to be off. But then if I try to turn this on by applying static voltage and back, it's still off. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, let's take a look at this. Oh, that's interesting as well. We see here from the drain to the gate, it's shorted. So it's got a drain to gate short. Uh, so this device here is basically conducting the VCC 50 volts straight to the gate. And that's what that was doing was it was causing the radio to power cycle because the power supply, which is over here, um, has two power supplies. It's got the 12 volt power supply for the radio and it's got a 50 volt power supply just for the, uh, the uh, PA, the power amplifier and the 12 volt power powers on the radio, and after a few seconds, the power supply, the switching power supply in the um, uh, power supply over here will energize 50 volts, and that was causing a short, and the power supply would go into a, a, a fault protection mode and shut down, causing the radio to power on, um, and then power off, and then recycle, and power on, then power off, and, uh, that's that was the fault mode that made me take a look at um, what was going on, and I I know how I popped the device. It's it was a mode and a function that uh, most people will never get into and never do. Uh, I'm not even going to really describe it because it's not something you should probably be in. It was always in a service menu doing something, but I've done factory alignments on this radio a few times, and I. Um, uh, if I break it, I'll fix it. In this case, it was my fault. I broke it, and so I fixed it. So I thought I would show you everyone kind of a, what to do, what the fault mode was when, when one of the finals fails, and uh, an easy way to check it. All right, thanks. And continuing, I thought I would show here. Um, these are in the schematic. These are the VRF 150s right here. <clears throat> And your source, you can see, is tied to ground here. And I'll pull that up. Here's these are the replaced. The, these are the uh, replacement VRF 150s I put in there. And there's something you'll notice. These have little J's down here at the bottom. That's a matched set, and um, uh, they will have different letter codes uh, for for what their the voltage threshold matching between them is. And they match them within one percent. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary to have a match set in here or not, but um, I went ahead and, and got a match pair because it didn't cost any more. I got them from Mauser next day uh, shipping. Um, 
and uh, right here, th this is your, your source connections here, 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 and here, and they're tied directly to ground. As a matter of fact, there's little um, washers, a little tab here um, that tie ground to the chassis, uh, to the uh, heat sink uh, screw here. Uh, that you want to be aware of and uh, when you remove those be careful and and also re reinstall them so there's four of them and uh, down here is your gate <clears throat> uh, which is fed from the uh, driver stage and then your drain which is into the uh, impedance transformer uh, T6004 it's a uh, impedance transformer for the output and um, let's see I have uh, some photos here of this is what it looked like once I pulled uh, the defective trans uh, defective uh, VRF 150s out. It's nice to have some decent soldering equipment. I have an Ungar um, desoldering tool uh, that uh, does wonders for for sucking up the solder and removing um, these devices. And here's what the devices looked like when I received them from Mauser. And here were the defected devices once I found. I checked this guy first and didn't find a problem with it, so pulled this guy over here, and sure enough, it was dead. So marked it with a red X because it was dead. A um, couple things to note when you replace these transistors or these these uh, finals, you have to rebias them. And there's these little tiny little potentiometers, VR5. Uh, VR4 and they don't tell you this in the in the uh, um, in the manual um, there's a few things they don't tell you in the manual one thing they don't tell you is in the pre-driver stage to make adjustments um, pre-driver stage right here uh, disconnect J6004 which is VCC um, and then connect an amp meter in between um, they right here, they say adjust VR6006 uh, 6, and 6001. Those are all part, I looked it up in the schematic and, and it did, did a little circuit analysis. And this is basically a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. And there might be a little interaction with, there's also a temperature compensating um, thermistor in there as well. Um, and this, the way you adjust these two may affect that temperature compensating thermistor a little bit, but it shouldn't have a whole lot of function. But they're not listed on, on this board at all. Well, they're down here. So uh, we, uh, let's see here, let's zoom in a lot. And zoom in more. And there, here's a VR6001 over here and VR6006, so they don't point these out like they do the other uh, adjustments. So if you have a hard time finding them, that's where they are. That's the pre-driver stage. Then you have um, your, your drive stage, uh, which also has a pair. That's these two guys. These are, so this is your pre-driver, this is your driver, and when you adjust it, they want you to adjust for 800 milliamps um, a piece. Let's see here, driver stage, uh, do, 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 do. No, they want, uh, yeah, 800 milliamps uh, a piece. But what they don't tell you is, you take VR6002 and VR6003, adjust all the way down to where you have no measured currents at all. Then adjust VR6002 to 800 milliamps, and then adjust VR6003 for 1.6 amps. It's not in the manual, but that's how you do it. And now I'll go one step further. And once I have 1.6 amps on VR6003, I'll adjust VR6002 back to zero and make sure that 6003 is adjusted for 800 milliamps. I want them to balance as close as possible. So if you see, you don't want one at 750 and one at 850. You want them both to be the same. So I'll adjust one up and then the other up to make 1.6 amps total and then adjust one down and then back up and the other one down and back up, make sure they're both balanced. Same thing in the final uh, stage uh, where you're adjusting um, VR6004 and 6005. Um, you wanna make sure they're balanced. In this case, 500 milliamps a piece. 
and uh, it's temperature the, the the you'll find it will drift a little bit with temperature so um i try to do it to where that once the fan leave it keyed up long enough enough idle current where the fan comes on and the heat sink's warm not hot just warm because that's that's where it's going to be operating the temperature of the heat sink's going to be warm when you're transmitting so i want it to be as close to its operating condition temperature as possible when i adjust the uh, idle currents and um so that's something they 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 leave out of here i take both adjustments for that particular stage, back them all the way to zero, and just one to 500 mil, the first one to 500 mil, and the second one to, to equal a total of one amp across the uh, the test uh, point. And uh, then I'll adjust one down at a time and back up to make sure that uh, it, they're, they're as balanced as close as possible. And that makes a big difference. I found, uh, I did an IMD test uh, once on this radio, and I found an improvement of almost two DB improved uh, IM3 on the uh, transmit two tone uh, just by balancing uh, the uh, driver state pre the driver and the final stage on this radio. So just some things I uh, thought I'd uh, point out in case anyone has to um, go through this. All right, that's all I got.